Do you want to increase your score on the English section of the ACT? Welcome to my new series where I've compiled my resources that I've used over the years to tutor multiple students to help them increase their subscores on the English section of the ACT. Question 1. Helen Keller's Light in the Darkness is the title of the passage that will have 15 corresponding questions. Helen Keller was born in 1880. Her life begun normally. She was happy and healthy. Here we need the correct verb tense. To review, we have the word begin in the present tense. We are going to begin now. Began, A-N, is the past tense. She began ballet lessons last month. Begun, U-N, is the past participle form of begin. We have begun to take long walks every morning. Always look at the context of the sentence or passage and make sure the tense in question matches the other verbs used. Notice was, past tense, is used twice here. So which word is past? Began. A-N. Her life began normally. D is the answer. Question two. She was happy, comma, and healthy, learning to walk and talk like her toddler peers. Our answer choices include a variety of comma placements. Which choice has simply too many commas for no reason? You can rule out choice H right away as incorrect. Now it is now is it correctly written as is? Should there be a comma between happy and and? No. F is also incorrect. For the same reason J is also incorrect, leading us to G. She was happy and healthy, comma, learning to walk and talk. G is the correct answer. Question 3. Look at that last sentence. The illness plunged Helen into a dark silence that most people cannot even imagine or think of. Notice how deleting the underlined portion is an option. Should we keep it, delete it, or change it to B, to think about, or C, to really think about? If you watched my Lesson 1 video, you'll remember that we need to avoid redundancy. To imagine and to think of mean close to one and the same. It's unnecessarily redundant to keep it. The correct answer is D. Delete the underlined portion. The sentence is still correct and retains the same meaning without it. Question four. This question asks, which of the following sentences, if added here, would best introduce the new subject of paragraph two? To answer this, you need to know what paragraph two is about. It says... Helen wandered around the family's property, anxious to discover new sensations, but unable to understand anything that she experienced. Her resulting tantrums became more violent as she continued to grow. Which sentence could introduce that paragraph? Well, we can probably rule out choices H and J. This paragraph is more about explaining how a loss of one's hearing and vision would result in a lot of frustration and not being able to communicate one's needs would lead to outbursts or violent tantrums, as the paragraph says. Choice G would be the best choice the next few years, so it's a good transition from her illness as a baby to childhood, were frustrating for Helen and physically and emotionally draining for her family. Question five. This question asks if you should replace discover new sensations with B, discover and feel new sensations, C, feel new sensations about making discoveries, or D, make discoveries and sense new feelings. 
refer back to lesson one to get this one right. A, no change. Avoid redundancy and keep it short and to the point. Avoid unnecessary words. Question six. Look closely at the use of commas and apostrophes. Use process of elimination. Rule out an answer choice if you see an error. Firstly, F, no change. There shouldn't be a comma between the adjective impaired modifying the noun daughter. Next, look at H. The apostrophe shouldn't appear after the S, but before the S in Helen's to show possession. Lastly, in J, you wouldn't put a comma after Helen's and before parents. G is correctly written. Feeling sorry for their impaired daughter, comma, Helen's parents allow the tantrums to occur with no consequences. Question 7. In a last-ditch effort to keep the increasingly unmanageable Helen from being sent up the state insane asylum, the Kellers contacted the Perkins Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. You should be able to sort of hear and know that that's written incorrectly just by the sound. Did they try to keep Helen from being sent to the state asylum, sent with the state asylum, or sent for the state asylum? The correct choice is B, sent to the asylum. Question 8. Primarily just a school for the blind, comma, its staff had once helped a child who was both blind and deaf. Try to immediately rule out the the obviously incorrect choice. What choice is wordy and hard to follow? J. For the blind, primarily the school, along with... Next, we want to avoid misplaced modifiers. Look at G. Primarily a blind school makes it sound like the school is blind. We generally say school for the blind instead. Now it is down to F or H. Which is just more clearly written? As is F, no change. Question nine. Only with self-discipline would Helen be able to overcome her tremendous challenges. That sounds pretty clear. Let's check the rest. B, Helen, only with her self-discipline, would. C, only by including self-discipline, comma, would Helen. Or D, only Helen with self-discipline would. The simplest, easiest way to write this is A, no change. Question 10. One stubbornness is exhausting, but Annie knew that, if channeled, it would be Helen's salvation. Should we say once, her, or Helen's? If we are talking about the stubbornness of people in general, we would use ones. However, we are specifically talking about Helen's stubbornness in this passage. So we can immediately rule out F and G. H, her stubbornness being exhausting, or Helen's stubbornness was. The passage as a whole is in the past tense. The correct answer is J. Question 11. Helen's stubbornness was exhausting, but Annie knew that, if channeled, semicolon, it would be Helen's salvation. In a previous lesson, I went over how to properly use semicolons. To sum it up now, if the semicolon should be there, there should be two independent clauses on either side. While the clause after the semicolon is independent, the one before it is not. A is incorrect. B is incorrect because that would be a run-on. C is incorrect because we don't use a colon there. We use a comma. D is the answer. Question 12. Annie was given permission to take Helen to live in a little house on the opposite side of the Keller's garden. Which verb or verb phrase is correct? Annie was given, 
Annie had gave, Annie was giving, or Annie gave. The two that sound correct are F and J. However, the two have different meanings if you consider the sentence as a whole. F retains the meaning that Annie obtained permission to take Helen to live on the opposite side of the garden. J means that Annie was the one who gave permission, not the Kellers, which is the correct meaning. F. No change. Question 13. Initially, Helen continued to fight Annie's efforts, but gradually the girl began to behave. Do we need an apostrophe, and if so, where? Since the efforts belong to Annie, we need to add an apostrophe S at the end of her name to show possession. Therefore, choice D is correct. Question 14. This question has to do with vocabulary, choosing the correct word that fits within the context of the sentence or paragraph. Her constant darkness was suddenly illuminated by this newfound understanding and her hunger for knowledge became blank. F. Repressed. G. Excited. H. Insatiable. Or J. Unfounded. One's hunger for knowledge wouldn't become repressed or held back, nor would it be unfounded. G and H are the better choices. So which is the best? Since the definition of insatiable means impossible to satisfy, such as in the new CEO had an insatiable hunger for success, this word best fits the sentence since it is slightly more precise than just being excited. Question 15. In a previous lesson, I went over these types of questions often found at the end of a passage. Remember that you often need to think of the entire passage as a whole instead of looking at just one part of it. This question asks, Suppose the writer was asked to write a brief essay about Helen Keller's professional accomplishments. Would this essay successfully fulfill this goal? Here's the strategy I use to save time and avoid confusion. I notice that choices A and B both say yes, but I do not read what comes after. I notice and I notice C and D say no. Again, my glance ends there. I try to answer the question with a yes or no to myself before reading the rest of it. Right away, my instinct is to say no because this passage only told of Helen Keller's youth. It did not address her accomplishments in her career as an adult. It told of her birth, illness, um, that led to her blindness and deafness, and how Annie Sullivan was able to teach her how to communicate when Helen was a child. By answering no, immediately, I know that I can rule out A and B without using up valuable time reading those lengthy answer choices. Now, look at C and D. Which one lines up with my initial, my initial reasoning to justify why I said no? So we do need to read these choices. So C says, no, because this essay mostly addresses Annie Sullivan's accomplishments concerning Helen. Okay, that sounds very close to my reasoning um, that I just gave above. D, no, because Helen's disabilities prevented her from having a successful career. That's not even a true statement. So it is most definitely not choice D. So C was the correct answer. <laughs> 